you always want to wash it out. Use your paper towel to dry it off, or you just be like me and you use a lot of water in with that color that you're using. Can I move this out? So, what's that? Oh. May I move this out, please? Okay. Everybody see. So how do you get like a blue streak? Is it just adding too much water to the blue and it just tips over and pours into the orange? Yeah, so probably what happened is someone used a lot of this and they used a different brush and it just had so much water on it when they went to go move it, it dripped down onto that surface. Mm -hmm. so yeah. The green yeah, and the green because you can see. Or they left a little bit of water in there and they're like, oh, Phil drips over. You know, it's like carrying a pizza sideways in the box. You know, it's mm -hmm. no good. No good. So there's that. Are you gonna have it nice and clean and organized like that? I mean, they got a little bit of some black around the side there. Uh, you will notice that there are two different types for watercolors. There is this sticky type of gel that they use, and then there's a very dried cake form that's almost like pastels. I just use this one here as an example so you can see how caked up it is. Um, but that's actually for drawing rather than watercolor, but you can use it. Um, so if you do have that, you always can. There are these nice tiny little brushes provided in some of the sets. Again, if students did not walk off with them. But what you want to do is make sure first that your brush is clean, because some students do not clean them. And if the shape of the brush is off, don't pinch and pull. You can lightly shape in it with your finger. And then when you need to clean it out at the end of the day, use a little bit of soap, like a little spot in your hand, and work that brush to clean it. You'll see all the suds up mm -hmm. on that brush. Don't pull on the ferrule because it will separate and then just put it back in. Any questions about that? Okay, so the basic concept in watercolor, you load up your brush with the water and you go to the you know color palette of whatever you want to use. Some of them they look so dark you know you can't tell the difference but you can see it on the edge. Like you can tell that this is the violet and that's the blue. So we'll go with the blue and you don't have to use that much water because right now that's plenty enough but you load up that brush yeah or you've got them labeled if you're that extreme you can totally do it but they might actually have different reactions say you know this blue versus the other and so you want to try that out especially when you're mixing I always set it off to the side when I do my mixtures that's why I like using the lid for so I don't mix it on my paper so I could sit here have my little bit of blue that I'm pulling up. I'm not mixing it in with that square. I'll get some of my yellow. I'm just getting it lightly wet, mixing it on there. And for some people it takes a little uh, of getting used to with the yellow to get that control. So you can see how it's caked up on the brush. But you see the mark that it leaves. It's pretty vibrant and bright even though you may not see it on your brush. But if I go ahead and I mix that in with my blue, the blue is gonna oversaturate that yellow, so you wanna use a little bit of it. And what happens when I make contact with that brush is that it's gonna suck up oh, into that brush. Yeah, it pulls it right into it, like it's a bounty <coughs> paper towel picking up all the liquid. But there's my green. And some people are like, well, why did you make green when you've got green right there? Maybe you want green. That's the magic, right? So I'll go over here. So here's this green. Who is a tree? <laughs> <laughs> you can paint your happy little trees, or you want. but then when you want to mix them together, again, watch what happens on your paper. You start to see where that line existed before, especially if it starts to dry up like this one. Mm. And then you've got those layers. Depending on the paper, like this one, this is real cheap. I can kind of burnish it out if it's a mistake. So they always say if you make a mistake, there's nothing you can do but keep covering it up or things like that. That's okay. Um, like how however, when you guys had acrylics, when you had your cup of water, you didn't have to rinse out as, as often. However, with this you do, or you use a lot of it, mm -hmm. really dilute it down. But the reason I have it a little there is so you guys are controlling that amount. So I'll go back here. I'll make some marks so you can kind of see something uh, kind of neat. Again, you guys just experimenting, remember flow. We see the variations mm -hmm. and the contrast. It's really unloading the pigment off of that brush in the water. But then, go back, we go with red. And I like to rotate the brush, like I'm doing it in slow motion, as I'm going back and forth, so I can pull as much color on that brush. And then, when you look at the colors, if this blue is still wet and I go to pull it across, 
and we start to see that that's resisting it more than these are. And it can actually change your color when you're making that pull. So it doesn't go automatically to violet, but then notice on the edge, if it's still wet, or if you're sitting there and you move it up, what's gonna happen to that liquid? It's gonna drip. Yeah, it's gonna drip, it's gonna move. You can even blow on the paper. Some people use straws to sort of control that all the way around, again, up to you. Um, there is, let's see if I can get this off. I clip my nails so it's gonna be kinda hard to do. I might do it on my canvas paper. So this is gummed watercolor paper tape. Brought to you by Art Advantage. <laughs> Sponsor me. Yeah. Sponsor, please. Send checks too. No. So I'm gonna let you guys pass that around. Uh, this is the inner version of it. So it just kind of looks like packing tape, but there's actually one side is sticky and the other side is not. So what you do with this is that you use it to mask. Did you guys get to do masking in Photoshop? Yes. This is how to do it in real life. So with this, it's a lot more laborious. Uh, there's different types. There's ones that you can actually paint on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the gum arabic, that's really nice. Or there's the paper types in which you can get nice clean lines and shapes. You know, you can even trace them out and cut along those lines or use the templates that we have. But I'll just do an example here. Some random shape. You think I'm gonna use that one? No, I'm gonna use this one. <laughs> Surprise. Switch direction. Now, with this one, because I'm just using the non-clean water, it may pigment the paper just a little. So you get it wet, it's like licking a stamp. We'll call it art. Uh-huh. And lightly press, see I get a little bit of that coloring from my water. Make sure it's nice and firm down on that surface. And then what we can do is we can actually apply the watercolor on top and it will mask it. So if you want, you can cut off a little piece and try it out. I did what I'm not supposed to do. Never leave your brush out. That didn't happen. How could you? It's on the <gasps> Painting <laughs> foul. <laughs> we have evidence. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use, let's, well, you guys already used black for your ink, but let's try the brown. And if you're filling in, say, a background, you get this very light brown. If you want it to be darker, what would you do? Yeah, add more pigment. Less water. Go slower. Less what else? Pigment. Less water. But then you really got to kick it on that brush. See that? Layers. Yeah. Just slow, small amounts. And with the uh, masking paper right here, after it dries, I can peel it away and it will leave that white of the paper. So a lot of people that, you know, they try to paint into their sphere and then they go over the line, oh, I made this mistake, you know. It really helps you save yourself from those errors. Cool. Would you recommend like an exacto knife to pick that up? Or? You could, yeah. Um, you just want to make sure that you're not going to cut into the paper. Mm -hmm. That's what I would be afraid of the most. Mm -hmm. so take your time. Yeah. yeah. Now, when we talk about uh, bleeding in with your colors, so this was your, you know, sphere project that I lightly put in here. So if I just go, let's say I mask the entire sphere, I could do that. I'm just going to fill in this surface, going around the edge very carefully, somewhere. Larger brushes for larger areas. Mm -hmm. This has more pigment in it. Now, remember in that image we actually had a highlight, right? I didn't just leave it white. I'll pretend like that was a little happy accident. I can actually use the brush to pull the pigment around. What's really handy about having my apron instead of a paper towel. I can pull up the color. I can do stippling to pull it up as well. You can get different textures for that sphere, make it more three-dimensional. And then if it's not lifting it off based on the brush you have, you can use your finger. Yeah, use a clean finger. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can soften that edge a little bit, give it that flat surface, go around on the sides, and then add in those values for those layers. If you get those streaks, dry out your brush, 
and just keep applying those lines going around. Now, if I add black on top of that, is it just going to make it a darker red? No, no it's going to be black. black. Will it be black? That's a fair question. So there's my black line, right? So if I wanted to say shade in that bottom, remember the red is still just a little wet, right? Mm -hmm. Dry it out, pull this up to the sun. And I'm pulling it around with water because it's still wet. If it was dry, then it would be in that black section. But because it's wet, yes, we can control that surface. A lot harder to work upside down than what I'm looking at. <laughs> Now notice that the lighter section of the red is now going to be my highlight, right? So I'm going around, I can draw out my brush, sort of erase those lines away slowly, keep going, adding in my value and that texture and the darkness. But see how I start to get that dark edge? Mm -hmm. There you have it. Any questions? No? I'll keep working on this so you guys can see it and then I'll prep it up for the salt and you guys can check that out. Uh, but what I want you to do is play around with your watercolor sets. Uh, I'll have the sets and the brushes uh, with us, or you can take it with you. Just make sure to bring it when we have our field trip. Uh, you guys will be actually doing uh, landscapes or painting anything that you want on site with watercolor. The packet